Hi, my name is Jason Rudder. I am a developer for Education Services at Juniper Networks. Today we're going to talk about SRX conditional route advertising in an SRX series chassis cluster. Uh, on the screen I have a sample topology that we're going to be using today. Uh, we have, as you see, node 0, node 1 connected in a chassis cluster. Uh, we have the control plane link. Um, these are SRX 240s, so we use the GIGI 001 and GIGI 501 ports. We have the fab link configured on GIGI 002 and GIGI 502. Uh, we are doing an active active setup, which means traffic can traverse either node, node 0 or node 1. And we have set up two redundancy groups redundancy group 1 and redundancy group 2. Redundancy group 1 is associated with RETH 0, redundancy group 2 is associated with RETH 1. Um, we are also dual homed to two different ISPs using BGP. So by default, with this kind of setup, um, traffic that may be uh, associated with RETH 0, um, in this case RETH 0 uh, is, is primary on node 0. So node 0 holds primacy for RETH 0 and redundancy group 1. Node 1 holds primacy for redundancy group 2 and ref 1. So let's say ISP B wanted to send traffic that was associated um, with ref 0 or destined to host A. Uh, by default, this traffic would traverse the link from ISP B going to node 1, and then it would traverse the fabric link. Um, and it would be received on node 0, and since node 0 is primary for the ref 0, node 0, uh, the traffic would then be sent out gig E004. Um, while there's nothing absolutely wrong with this, it's, it, it is suboptimal in that you are sending traffic across the fab link, and it could be a substantial amount of traffic. Um, another name for this kind of behavior is known as Z-mode traffic forwarding, because it sort somewhat resembles a Z as the traffic uh, traverses node 1, goes across the fab link, and then back down to, to host A. So this is where conditional route advertising can come in handy and make your traffic flow much more optimized. So let's take a look at what we have set up here. We have, um, as you see, redundancy group 1, node 0 is primary. We have redundancy group 2, where node 1 is primary. As I mentioned, the REF0, the Redundant Ethernet 0 interface, is associated with Redundancy Group 1, and the Redundant Ethernet 1 interface, or REF1, is associated with Redundancy Group 2. So um, I have a, a rapid ping set up um, just to show that right now, if we take a look at the FAB interface, uh, we're going to see that uh, we have 250, 250 packets per second or so traversing that FAB interface. So this is pretty good evidence that we have Z-mode traffic forwarding going on. Um, so if we if we look at our current BGP setup, you'll see we have two uh, groups set up, two peerings, um, one to ISPA and one to ISPB. We do have an export policy, which is exporting static routes. Um, we have a 55.0.0 slash 24 network that belongs to redundancy group 1 or with 0, with 0, and we have a 56.0.0 slash 24 subnet that is associated with ref 1 or redundancy group 2. So as of now, uh, we're just taking all static routes, accepting them, and exporting them into BGP. So if we look at Run Shield Route Advertising Protocol BGP, and we'll look at ISPA first, which is 172.18.1.1, we'll see that we are sending both 55 route, which is associated with redundancy group 1, and the 56 route, which is associated with redundancy group 2. If we look at what we're sending to ISPB, 
which is 2.1, we'll see we're also sending both that traffic, both traffic for both of those prefixes. So in this case, um, you could see traffic that's uh, associated with host A or ref0 could come from either ISP A or ISP B. If it comes from ISP B, we know that it's going to be sent across the fab link because currently node 0 is primary for, for ref0 or, or redundancy group 1. So we're going to try to fix this suboptimal condition. And I've already configured a couple of uh, policies. Uh, I've configured ref0 conditional is what I've named the first policy. And this one, this policy, as you see, it's, it takes static um, uh, from protocol static. And then we have a condition. Um, I've named the condition ref0 active next hop. So if we take a look at the condition, it's also configured under policy options. Uh, so basically this condition says if the route is active on node 0, the next top, um, then, then it's okay to accept this traffic. So we set up this condition. We've, we've matched on the condition in protocol static and uh, a policy. And then we are going to set up another policy for ref1 or redundancy group 2. And it says that uh, if the breath 1 is the active next top. So if we look at the condition, uh, this one says if the route is active on node 1, then we can accept the traffic. So let's go ahead and apply these. We'll go back to the PGP configuration. We are going to delete our current export, which just exports all statics. ISP A. Oops. Let's pull that back. Because I, I didn't mean to delete that. All right, so we still have our groups here. We are going to leak ISPA's export policy this time. And we'll delete ISPB's export policy. We're going to apply our, our new policies. So for ISPA, we are going to apply the ref zero conditional policy. So ISPB, we're going to apply the ref1 conditional policy. OK. So in this case, if the next top is active on node 0 or ref0, since node 0 is prima, primary for ref0, then it's going to advertise the route out to ISP A. If the route is active on node 1, it's going to advertise the route out to ISP B. So let's go ahead and commit our changes. Give that a second. So in this case, we should see that we're advertising, instead of advertising both the 55.0.0 and the 56.0.0 to both neighbors, ISPA and ISPB, we should be advertising the 55.0.0 route to ISPA and the 56.0.0 route to ISPB. So because node 1 is primary for ref 1 or redundancy group 2, and that's what's associated with the 56.0.0 subnet, 
traffic going to the 56.0.0 address will traverse node 1 and go straight to the ref1 subnet without having to traverse the fab link. Traffic going to 55.0.0 slash 24 addresses should uh, enter the chassis cluster from ISP A and node 0 having primacy in the redundancy group 1 group with ref0 uh, will be directly connected to the 55.0.0 hosts. So traffic will flow directly from SPA to node 0 to ref0, again bypassing the need to go over the fab link and providing a more optimal traffic flow. So let's see that our ping is still going, and it is. Let's take another look at our fab link. Ah, we see that our packets per second has dropped down significantly. Uh, we're only seeing about five packets per second now, and those are most likely RTOs or, or other types of, of um, data plane control type of traffic. So that's a good sign. Let's take a look at what we're advertising out now. We'll look at ISPA first. 72.18.1.1 and we see we're only sending the 55.0.0 slash 24 prefix. If we take a look at what we're advertising to ISPB, uh, we're only advertising the 56.0.0 slash 24 network. So because node 1 is primary for redundancy group 2 which has this 56.0.0 traffic um, traffic is going directly from ISPB to node 1 to redundancy group 2. Uh, also, traffic destined to the 55.0.0 network is going straight from ISPB, I'm sorry, ISPA to node 0 to ref 0. So, we are no longer uh, seeing the Z mode traffic flow. Um, and the nice thing about this is it's, you still have full redundancy. Um, take another look at our policy options. You know, since our condition is what route active on node 0 um, for our REST 0 condition, conditional policy, to, which we're exporting in ISPA, if suddenly node 0 were to become primary for REST 1 or redundancy group 2, um, then node 0 would start advertising that 56.0.0 prefix to ISPA as well. So if there are any sort of mastership changes in the, the redundancy groups, you're still covered and you still have optimal traffic flow. And that's how to use uh, conditional route advertising on an SRX series chassis cluster. I hope that you learned something from it today and I thank you very much. If you need further information, you can view our Tech Pubs website at the URL located on the screen. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.